Are you ready for video number three of this PCOS series? Well, then let's talk supplements to help you balance your hormones. Hello lovelies and welcome to another one of my videos in which we'll be talking about PCOS and the supplements that you can use to manage your polycystic ovaries. If you haven't seen any of the previous videos of this series, which are um, finding your fertile window and the first three steps you can take to start healing from PCOS, then make sure to click on the card up here or wait until the end of the video and click on the playlist that I will link in there. That's all about PCOS and the list just keeps on growing. You may have already discovered that most internet searches will tell you that PCOS cannot be healed or cured. It can only be managed. Well, I'm here to tell you that that isn't true because PCOS is just a disruption of your hormonal system, just like estrogen dominance might be. So when you get to the root of the issue and you can restore that balance, you can totally kick this problem. And no, let me be honest with you, it's not easy. Even treating PCOS cases in my clinic is not easy, it's not a quick fix. That is, nine out of 10 times. Sometimes I'll have somebody all they need is a detox of one thing or another and boom, they're sorted. However, know that just because it might take a long time for you to really get rid of the problem doesn't mean that it can't be cured. You need to be in it for the long haul. There are two ways to restore this hormonal imbalance. And the first is changing your lifestyle and getting the right supplements. And the second is getting homeopathic treatment. Now, I'll be honest with you, doing both will give you the best results and the quickest results. Because homeopathic treatment is the only medicine that I know of that actually looks at the root cause of a disruption of your health and then triggers that healing mechanism to heal your body again. However, that's not to say that changing lifestyle and getting the right supplements cannot actually help you cure because it might just be the boost that you need to set that healing mechanism into motion. However, if you've taken every supplement under the sun and have done every type of lifestyle change that you can think of and you're still not shifting your PCOS, then look at homeopathy because you're definitely not getting deep enough with the measures you've already taken and homeopathy can do that for you. A very simple example is detoxing the pill. I've mentioned this before that taking the contraceptive pill for a longer period of time can also be a root cause of PCOS. So detoxing that could be a really simple homeopathic thing that needs to be done. I'll be doing a video on this more specifically in the future. I just wanted to say that in this video and the part two, I will only be mentioning the supplements and the nutrients for PCOS and why they're useful for PCOS. I'm not going to be mentioning any dosages because I feel I would do you a huge injustice because I truly believe that these supplements need to be tailored to you. So I would recommend to go and see a naturopath or a nutritionist or that you do your own research and that you make an informed choice yourself. So as I said, I am splitting this video you in two because there are so many supplements out there and it's really easy to categorize them according to two categories. The first is glucose metabolism issues because this is a huge problem when it comes to PCOS and not only that it feeds the second problem which is high levels of androgens including testosterone and that's what's causing the hair growth in the wrong spots because you might be balding on your head and all the other stuff that you don't want and the cystic ovaries. So in this video we'll be talking about the glucose ones and then the next one the other hormonal ones. But for now, let's get into these goodies. When you have PCOS, it is not unlikely for you to be struggling with your weight and struggling with sugar addiction or carb addiction or both pretty much. In the first video I did for this PCOS series, I talked about this a little bit and I explained that getting on top of your diet and your sugar intake is extremely important because more sugar in your body means more insulin and higher insulin means higher androgens and the androgens are those hormones. They call it the male hormones even though men and women both have them, but for women, they can't be in the same amounts as for the guys because then we get the male characteristics and we get the cystic ovary. So I just wanted to remind you that besides these supplements, your exercise regime and your whole food diet are equally important to treating your PCOS naturally. The first goodie is inositol. Inositol? Inositol? 
inositol. How do you even say that? <laughs> we produce inositol ourselves, but mostly get it from our food. And inositol is really important when it comes to the cell processes around insulin. Taking additional inositol increases cell sensitivity to insulin. And if you've watched that previous video of mine, then you may remember what insulin does. Insulin takes glucose or sugar in our body into the cells and glucose is important for the energy of the cells. However, if we are insulin resistant, then the cells will not pick up on the glucose, even if it's hanging around. As a result, your body starts to produce more insulin because they think there's clearly not enough insulin to get the glucose into the cells. And as a result, you become even more insulin resistant. Not only is the problem that you'll become even more insulin resistant because insulin goes up, the glucose will still be hanging out in your body and will not be used. So first of all, the glucose is turned into fat reserves, so you are getting bigger. And secondly, you still feel hungry and tired because the glucose, the energy, isn't going into the cells where you need it. So now you understand that taking additional inositol improves the sensitivity of the cells to insulin, the glucose goes into the cells, you feel less hungry and tired, so you're less likely to have cravings, and the glucose isn't turned into fat as much as it is previously. There's another group of nutrients that will help reduce insulin resistance, and that is chromium, magnesium, and zinc. If you have a history of using the contraceptive pill, then it is quite likely that you have become zinc deficient as well. So taking an addition of that is really important. And then we also have manganese, and manganese also helps you with insulin resistance, so it makes your cells more insulin sensitive. And the interesting thing is that in diabetics, it has been seen that they are really deficient in manganese. And you understand now that if you have insulin resistance for a longer period of time, that eventually your pancreas that creates insulin will just get depleted and exhausted. As a result, your body stops producing the insulin and you become diabetic. That's why diabetics are often given insulin injections if medication is not helping anymore. So you see that getting on top of your insulin resistance is also really important because it predisposes you to diabetes. And then on to fatty acids, DHA and EPA. And you'll be able to find these in the fish oil supplements. I'm a huge, huge fan of fatty acids for many reasons. There's research out there that high doses of it can treat depression, is really important for egg quality, it's very important for the development of your uh, baby's brain when it's in your womb, and it's fantastic for preparing for labor. However, when it comes to PCOS, again, it's very important to combat insulin resistance. And not only that, when you have PCOS, you have a constant inflammation going on in your body, and inflammation will make you deficient in DHA, so supplementing with this is really important for you for many reasons. Berberine, have you already come across this one? I have no experience with using this Chinese herb. However, it is known for regulating glucose. Again, if you're already in that severe insulin resistance stage or if you've gone into diabetes. However, I cannot recommend using this because it is advised against when you are pregnant or nursing. So when you're trying to conceive, which most of my viewers are, then this is not a great herb for you to be using at this point. Instead, you could be using vitamin B3, which also helps to control sugar balance in diabetic people. Green tea, well, this gem can be used as an extract or it can be drunk just as tea, of course, in its many forms and flavors. However, if you're trying to conceive, this might not be a good option for you because I don't recommend to take caffeine when you are trying to conceive, and green tea does contain caffeine. Even the extract is not advised in general for women that are pregnant or that are nursing, so maybe lay off the green tea. What you could decide is if you are in a cycle that you're not trying to conceive, that you drink extra tea or you take the extract, or that you just use it in your follicular phase. Because green tea is pretty amazing, and that's why I had to mention it, because it helps you lose weight or control your weight. It combats high levels of insulin, high levels of LH, high levels of estrogen, high levels of testosterone, and you know, we kind of want that when it comes to PCOS. So although this is really, truly a natural treasure, 
mm, think about whether you should be taking it in certain times and not take it while you are trying to conceive actively. All right, now you've got a bunch of supplements to consider to work on your sugar metabolism problems and indirectly your entire hormonal system. Now, if you're interested in part two, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you are notified whenever it comes up, which won't be in too long, probably. If you haven't seen the other videos in this PCOS series yet, then make sure to click on the playlist on your screen right now. As I said, this list is ever growing because there's so much to say about treating PCOS naturally and I want you to be able to get on top of it. So I love making these videos for you. And in the meantime, see you in the next video. Bye.